Hello, welcome to GCSE Bite Size Science. This is Dr Chris Smith and also Dr Kat Arney. We're from The Naked Scientists. Over the past 200,000 years, humans have successfully colonised every habitable corner of the globe. But our presence on Earth has had a big impact on the environment. So Kat, tell us a bit more about the scale of the problem. All living things have evolved to exploit their surroundings and us humans are certainly really good at it. We can adapt to pretty much any habitat and climate from the desert to the extreme cold. And back in the day before the development of farming, about 10,000 years ago, our ancestors roamed around hunting and gathering food. And because this life was tough, the population stayed small. But when we learned to farm, the population really started to grow. So where are we now? Over the past 500 years, there's been a population explosion going from about a billion people on Earth to more than six and a half billion. And that's now rising at a rate of more than 200,000 people every day. In developed countries like here in the UK, we have quite a good standard of living, lots of food, we have clean water, cars and safe houses. Now in the developing world, such as some countries in Africa, this is less common, but many countries are catching up fast. So what kind of impact is this population growth at this rate having on the planet? Well, this huge growth is causing a significant strain on the environment in several ways. For a start, we're using up the non-renewable energy supplies such as coal, gas and oil. When they run out, they're gone forever. We also are quickly using up raw materials and producing a lot of waste. And in the process, we're creating lots of pollution. And all this isn't very good for the planet. OK, so first of all, let's look at some of these issues in a bit more depth. What's the issue with pollution? We can define pollution basically as the addition of substances to the environment that are harmful to living organisms. And this can be caused, for example, by human populations not handling their waste properly. So what sorts of things would count as pollution? An obvious example is something as simple as litter, but we can also cause pollution of the air and the water as well as the land. OK, well explain how that's caused then. A common source of land pollution is our rubbish. I mean, you call it trash, garbage, waste. It's still got to go somewhere. And not all of it is harmless to the environment or to us. Even common household rubbish can contain toxic chemicals. For example, smoke detectors have small amounts of a radioactive metal called americium. And much of this waste is just dumped in landfill sites and the nasty chemicals can leak out into the earth. And what about other sources of land pollution? Oh, as well as our household trash, factories often dump their waste in landfill and farmers use fertilisers and pesticides on their crops, which can damage living things by polluting the land and then being washed into rivers, lakes and seas. Well, you mentioned chemicals being washed into water, so tell us a bit more about water pollution. Well, toxic chemicals in waterways and the sea cause pollution, and these can include fertilisers from farming, which can damage the animals and plants that live in the water. Sewage, other toxic chemicals such as pesticides, these can also kill water plants and creatures, as well as potentially harming our health. And how can you tell if water is, is polluted in this way? A good way is to look at the number of tiny insects that live in the water because most can't survive in polluted water. And another example is pollution by certain chemicals such as fertilisers can cause massive carpets of algae in lakes known as algal blooms and these kill the fish and other animals and plants that are living there. Sounds nasty. What about air pollution though? Uh, most air pollution is down to burning fossil fuels, so that's things like petrol, diesel, gas, oil and coal. And we burn these in cars and in power stations, and these release chemicals into the air. Well, what sorts of chemicals do they include? For a start, there's smoke, and that's mostly carbon-based chemicals, and this leaves that nasty black soot on trees and buildings. It can also hang in the air, making it difficult to breathe. So smoke in the air can cause smog, that's the thick, choking air pollution that you get in some cities. Burning fossil fuels can also create the poisonous gas carbon monoxide as well as carbon dioxide and that's a so-called greenhouse gas that adds to global warming. And finally, there's sulphur dioxide which is a pretty nasty chemical that can make acid rain. So is there an easy way I can tell if the air around us is polluted? Well, if you want to, you can go and look at some lichens, and these are little plant-like organisms that grow on trees and rocks. They take in water and nutrients from the rain. So basically, they can't live in places where the air is really polluted, especially if it's polluted with sulphur dioxide. So if you go and look around and you can spot big old bushy green lichens, that means that the air around you is nice and clean. If you can only see leafy lichens, there's probably a bit of pollution. And if you only see crusty lichens, these can grow in places where there's quite a lot of pollution. And if you can't see any lichens at all, you're probably in a really polluted area. Well, that doesn't sound too good. And in part two, we'll look at some of the other impacts that humans are having on the planet.